This is Greg Pruitt, the author of Extreme Prayer. In chapter eight, we bring the whole book together into a kind of process with step-by-step -step instructions that first you would ask God to show you what it is he wants you to do. And really, you can't do this extreme prayer thing unless God does show you what he wants you to do. But once you have your marching orders from God, just like Jesus said, you know, if you, um, you're, you're his friends. And so, you know, he's going to show you the master's business for your life and find out what God wants you to do in your neighborhood, in your church, in your Sunday school class or small group or in the world. And then, you know, it, it's going to take you a little bit of time to listen for God's assignment in your life. You know, you're going to want to, during prayer times, uh, listen to God. And uh, there's another book after this one called Extraordinary Hearing that can help you with that if, if you have difficulty understanding how to do that part. And then uh, you're going to want to keep strategic prayer request lists. You really can't pray uh, specific uh, prayers. You can't persist in prayer. You can't have unified group prayer if you don't have kind of something you've agreed to pray on. And so, you know, when you listen to God and you receive your assignment from God, chances are, if you really are receiving from God your uh, marching orders, it's going to scare you to death. You know, there's going to be things about it where, you know, we can't do this. Of course you can't. That's the whole point about prayer, that uh, you're going to want to collect all the reasons why this is impossible. This thing that God has wanted to, has, has brought before you and has uh, willed for you to do. There's going to be reasons why you can't do it. Uh, there's, you know, maybe you don't have skills. Maybe you don't have people. Maybe you don't have uh, money or facilities or whatever it might be. Uh, and you're going to want to write those things down. And that's your requests. Those are the prayers that you're going to pray. And then you're going to want to gather together with a group of people and unite regularly for persistent group prayer. You know, well, how long do you pray the same things? You know, we've prayed some things for as long as eight years in Pioneer Bible Translators before we actually saw God move in power and did it. He did it. And then lastly, you're going to want to pray expectantly. It's, you know, harder than it sounds. So, for example, you can tell really quickly if you're not really expecting an answer from, you know, to your prayers. Like, you know, you're one time I'm praying to God for guidance. All of a sudden, I'm getting this massive download of, of instructions and marching orders from God coming into my mind. And I realize I didn't come with a pen and paper. You know, you've, you've got to show God that you expect that he will be answering. For example, the very first uh, strategic prayer request list, like it says in number three there, um, that the I used to call it the long-term prayer request list because these were things that were, in my mind, going to be so hard for God that he, you know, it was going to take him a long time to answer those. How expectant that God was going to move in power was that really? I couldn't keep it up to date. I had to change the name. That's where we came up with strategic prayer request list. So pray expectantly. When you start this um, approach of making prayer the strategy, it's not going to come easy. And uh, I found that sometimes in different ministries or different groups of people, they just don't quite know where to start to apply it. But what I've found over and over again is that people who, uh, who will get involved in this and start trying to make prayer the strategy of their work and their ministry 
Uh, the biggest game changer is when they make a strategic prayer request list for their ministry. And that, that seems to be kind of the watershed moment where they say, okay, here are the five things that we're going to pray. Some of them we're going to organize as mountains. These are the big obstacles. And some of them, they're kind of more like we're praying goals that we, we believe God wants us to accomplish certain goals. And we put those at the top of the list. And then we've got all the, the things that are going to make it, the, the obstacles are going to stand in our way that we're going to pray out of the way. And if, if you'll make that strategic prayer request list, I think you'll find that people begin to see answers to prayer. And then they'll begin to grow in their faith. And the, one of the saddest verses is in Luke 18, 8, when Jesus says, will the son of man find faith on the earth when he comes back? And you can tell from the Greek that the answer that's expected there is no. You know, it's kind of like him saying, you know, it's not really going to work out, is it? I'm not really going to find faith on the earth. And I, when I read that, I just think, oh, Lord, this time you are going to find faith on the earth. You're going to find it in me. You're going to find it in us. We're really going to, to pray and become people of faith. So follow these steps and get your marching orders from Jesus and begin to see what God will do.